So now we came back to the office, we brought in our gear and the computer with the collected data from the tree and now we will have a look on the screen to see what's going on in the program. In the field we put in the height above ground on this tab of the program of every sensor. It was approximately the same level. Then we put in the position on the circumference tape for every sensor and this would assume a circular tree. Because the tree was not circular, we did put in some information about sensors sitting further out and in than compared to a circular tree, and this is this column here. Then we define the species of the tree. Is it a conifer, is it a ring porous tree or a diffuse porous tree? And we made clear that the sensor 1 is sitting in the north direction so that the orientation of the cross section is clear. The second tab of the program shows us the distance in centimeters between every sensor pair, so from sensor 6 to any others and so on. The third tab is the actual measurement, that means every line represents one tapping. Every time we tap on a sensor, we create one line in this table and the numbers that are shown in these cells are the travel times of the stress wave we induce with the hammer in microseconds. That means if the value is 1000, 1000 microseconds for the stress wave to travel from one sensor to the other, 1000 microseconds means 1 millisecond. That means actually very fast. So the machine has to be very precise and has to be able to grab these very slight impulses and stress waves within the tree in a very fast time. The resolution of the measurement is going down to 1 microsecond, so a very high resolution. The precision of the measurement at the end is far worse than these high resolution values because of all the other influencing factors, basically wood anatomy and other natural factors in the tree that we have no influence on. The fourth page, the fourth tab of the table of the program shows us the apparent speed of the stress wave traveling from one sensor to each other because we don't know which path the, travel, uh, the stress wave took the speed value here is the so-called apparent speed only when the wood was completely intact then the stress wave traveled directly from one sensor to the other and then we have the really correct representing stress wave travel speed but in most cases there is something wrong in between the two sensors and so consequently there are travel speed differences very high ones here for example from 1200 1100 down to 300 so obviously the speed of the sound wave was different actually the speed was the same but several stress waves had to take a long detour and so the apparent speed is smaller so now we go to the delta page on this page the program shows the inherited error in every of the measurements and the values should be below 10 percent in this case it's mostly even below three percent so a very high precision the next page shows the lines. The line graph indicates by color if the stress wave speed was high or low between the sensors. If these lines are green, we can assume that the stress wave traveled straight forward through the intact wood. So everywhere we have a green line, we can be sure that it was intact. When we have yellow, like here, or orange, or even purple or red lines, we can be sure that something is wrong between the sensors. Between 5 and 9, for example, 6 and 9, something is wrong. That means somewhere between 6 and 9, something makes the stress wave traveling around a defect. can be a crack or a small decay pocket, or included bark between buttresses. And so the stress wave has to take a longer detour and so the apparent speed is smaller and so the color of the line is going to red. Based on these lines the computer program reconstructs the internal condition of the tree and in this case it's nearly completely intact. We have some yellow spots in the center and they indicate I would think most likely internal bark that is included between the different buttresses that are flowing into the stem. So this inspection largely shows the tree is completely intact. There is not any sign of any significant decay. In such an inspection this would be the end of the evaluation because if you don't find any severe decay, nothing that can be of 
any danger to the traffic safety of the tree so there's no need for any further inspection. I would like to show you another example where we inspected another tree that had heavy decay pockets, big decay pockets and I would like to show you the differences. Now on the right we have the tree that we just inspected some minutes ago and on the left we see the line graph of a tree that was inspected some weeks ago. And here you can see most of the lines are not green, most of the lines are yellow, red or even purple. That means between these sensors where we have a connection line that is red or purple, something is wrong. That means there is a defect. Consequently, easy to understand, from this area we don't have any information what is in there. We just know that these stress waves didn't travel straight. That means the stress wave from sensor 5 to sensor 14, for example, most likely traveled this way, close to 10, or the other way, the other way around. That means the stress wave had to travel a long detour, because of that the apparent speed is slow, and because of that the program shows a purple or a red line. Based on these lines, the computer program reconstructs the internal situation, and you can see there is a lot of decay in the tree. That means there is a lot of area in the cross section that doesn't take, can, doesn't carry any load anymore. Physically speaking, what the computer program mainly shows is not the condition of the wood, but it basically represents the load carrying part of the cross section. That means which parts of the cross section are still carrying load while the tree is under wind load, for example. In the red part of the cross-section that we see here in the, on the screen, we basically have no information because the stress waves didn't travel through this area, so we don't know exactly what is in there. We just know that this part is not mechanically connected to the outer parts, the green parts, and this part is not carrying any load. So again, this can be a mixture of cracks, voids, or whatever, kinds of different kinds of decay. The basic thing, what the, the main thing what we know is it doesn't carry any load. And because of that we can calculate the relative strength loss due to this decay. And that's the major result of such an inspection. The first one is just to see there is something wrong, but the amount of decay in a cross-section is not directly correlated to the amount of strength loss. But in terms of safety of the tree, the relative strength loss is the most important thing. So we check that on this page. And these curves, curves around the tree show the relative strength loss for wind load from all directions. So if the wind comes from north, for example, this tree has a remaining strength of approximately 70%. That means he lost about 30% of his strength due to this decay. Consequently, from this calculation we can derive do we have to take any action? Do we have to reduce the wind load by, for example, pruning the crown? And this graph gives us a number, gives us a magnitude of reduction of strength and this in this case is about 30%. That means the cross section is approximately 30% weaker than it would be if it would be completely intact. This is in many cases a total surprise because the strength loss is mostly much smaller than the area loss. That means the cross sectional area is heavily decayed, probably 50% of the area has significant parts of decay in it or defects, but the strength loss is smaller. The strength loss in this case is only 30%. The location of the decay is more important in terms of strength loss than the size of the decay. So when we compare this to the tree that we inspected today, we can clearly see there is a big difference, which indicates that the tomography is a very nice method even to explain the situation of a tree to laymen because these pictures are very easy to understand and the colors are speaking for themselves. If you see a cross-section like here with completely green and some yellow dots you know this sounds good and this looks good and if you see a cross-section like here with a lot of red in the green area and only a few parts that are completely green and flat and, and looking nice you know that there is something wrong in this tree. But again, the visual impression of the internal decay often leads to a wrong decision. We often condemn too many trees. When we only check this page, we have to find out what is the real strength loss. 
and then we can make decisions on if we have to prune the tree or if we can still preserve it by doing something or if we have to cut it down. So the final result of the stress wave tomography is the relative strength loss for each wind direction.